How's it going, everybody? <laughs> I was waiting to uh, to go live because I couldn't find the recipe that I'm looking for. I already have my pasta boiling, but I can't find it. So this is fun. I know it's in here. So hi, how's it going? I'm having a great day. I uh, got up at like eight o'clock. Made some coffee. I bought some muffins the other day to have for breakfast today. And VP and I had a really great, like, chill breakfast. We got ready. I had my grocery list ready to go for this morning. And uh, we dropped one of our cars off to get inspected. And we went grocery shopping. I've just gotten so much accomplished today. It's like a miracle. And, uh, yeah, However, how's everybody else's morning going? Yeah, I only play the music um, during the intro now. I found it! Yes! Okay. So, my voice is a little crackly, though. I can turn down the microphone. Is this any better? Any better? Any better? I think maybe I could try changing the uh, frequency on the lavalier mic as well. You have the stream starting picture. Everybody else can see me, right? I'm looking at OBS. I see myself. Did you pause it by accident? <laughs> um, so anyway, guys, I'm trying to make like five things today. Um, so that I don't have to cook a lot for the rest of the week. And uh, it's going to be ambitious for me. But I really want to get it done. Because one of the things that I would like to start doing during the week is taking better care of myself. And even if cooking healthy meals is part of that, like actually getting enough sleep and, you know, exercising, that's another part of it. <laughs> And if you spend all your time in the kitchen, you know, you really don't have the opportunity to do all of those things. Hello, Lee. Thank you for being here. Um, so the, um, all of the things that I'm making are in the stream title today. So I've started by, um, I'm already cooking my pasta. It only has a few minutes left. I'm making a, a corn and quinoa gluten-free pasta to go with my walnut parsley pesto. And this is a recipe that I just came up with a long time ago. It's um, different, but I like it, it's really good. I actually did think about getting some uh, fresh basil from the garden as well to put in it, but I just, I didn't. I'll make real pesto out of that. Well, have they tried um, other types of pesto, Zeus, or have, has it just been like the regular um, basil pesto? Because there's so many different ways you can make it. Pesto is just, you know, like a, a green sauce. And I didn't even get my thingy out yet. Goodness. Um, so the recipe that I made for this was using one ounce of parsley originally. But I'm going to be a little pickier about it today. I'm basically going to use a lot of it and just kind of eyeball it. So one to two ounces is definitely a good amount to put in your pesto. And the beauty of this recipe is that you don't really need to cook the, the sauce. You just basically blend it and then you mix it together with your noodles. Um, and it's really like easy to put together very fast. So I'm going to start by putting, my mom refuses to try others. I've had, to, I had a fight about it, fight with her about it this morning. That's unfortunate. The pasta should be done. 
Alexa, stop. So it's very important to always try your pasta, but just by looking at it, it is starting to break. So I, it looks like I don't even need to worry about that. It's definitely cooked all the way through. Very yellow because of the corn. And I'm just gonna set this um, pot off to the side because when my sauce is done, I'm just gonna mix it in the pot. So, walnuts in a blender. And I seriously bought this bag of walnuts uh, like last year. It, last, it has lasted me that long. Yay, Jinx is better. Okay, so we've got the walnuts and we're gonna use vegetable broth instead of a ton of oil. And that's one of the reasons why I came up with this recipe is because I wanted pesto, but I didn't wanna have like a lot of olive oil in it. Not that olive oil is really, really bad for you, but any amount of oil is gonna be difficult for your cardiovascular system it constricts your blood flow and all kinds of lovely stuff. So uh, three quarters of a cup of vegetable broth and I did eyeball it. And we're just gonna use the rest of this in our soup. And I am gonna use olive oil for flavors. Two tablespoons. Thank you for stopping by Jinx. I'll talk to you later. Have fun at work. I do have a scale. I could definitely try to weigh out like one and a half to two ounces of parsley, but it needs batteries and sometimes it just won't turn on at all. We might get it to work. It just says low. Low? Come on. Maybe a little? No, it doesn't want to work. Oh well. I tried. Um, okay, so we got the olive oil. We need salt, garlic powder, and white wine vinegar. Garlic powder. Have you guys ever had a pesto made with another type of herb as opposed to basil? I'm a PBS nerd. I'm not sure if you've seen me wearing that t-shirt in pictures, but I have one. It says PBS nerd on it. Um, but I used to watch... Um, Lydia's Italy, and she used to make all different types of pestos on her show. One tablespoon white wine vinegar. And that's probably where I got the idea from. I might have looked it up and then changed the recipe. I'm not really sure, but I've been making it for a while. Half a teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of garlic powder. Now, ideally you want to have your sauce done like right when your noodles are done. Cause as we're talking and I'm making this and putting it together, the uh, noodles are becoming like really tough and hard and gross. And hopefully it won't be too bad <laughs> as leftovers. One and a half teaspoons of nutritional yeast. So, let's see. Let me do that. And we'll just do two. Okay, white wine vinegar, traditional yeast. And then my parsley. So,
We're just going to put the pasta back in here for now. It's actually not too bad at the moment, so that's good. I had a few runaways. We're going to rinse this off and we're just literally going to put a bunch of it in the blender. You can chop off some of the, the stems if you want, but the stems have flavor and when you're blending it, it's not going to really like interfere with the texture. And obviously check it to make sure it's not all wilty and gross. And we're going to do a little bit more. Zeus has had basil, parsley, rosemary, and a bit weird dill. But it was it was good and not what you'd expect. Usually I get basil, though, since Italian restaurants like being generic. You've had cilantro pesto before, huh? Was that like just cilantro or was it a combination of other herbs and cilantro? Because I imagine that that would be pretty flavorful if it was all just cilantro. And did they do like avocado <laughs> like when I think of cilantro I just think of like cilantro avocado I don't know why and if that's only me but I doubt it look out buddy crash Zeus says I think it was just cilantro and walnut so I mean I I see the potential in that I've never thought to try it before though. So I'm gonna blend this up and see how it tastes. And if it's not parsley enough, um, I'll just add some more, but it should be fine. Man, I've got, can you guys see the tower of ingredients that I have set up to work with today? <laughs> the blender is back here. I don't think I've ever had avocado in pesto. Well, me neither, but I'm just, you know, like, avocado cilantro person, so that's why I asked. It is flavorful, but I think I'm going to add a tiny bit more. And did you know that parsley is an extremely rich in antioxidant herb. Especially the fresh kind. Dried herbs, depending on which kind it is, are sometimes not as nutritious as the fresh kind. Sometimes they're more nutritious, but I believe with parsley, it is best when it's fresh. Okay, that's probably pretty good. So I'm just gonna get this out of the way. And I need a little scraper deal because it's a very thick sauce. So when I go to serve this, I'm going to put chopped fresh tomato on top. I'm not gonna put it in the lunch containers. Um, right now because part of the appeal of having it fresh on top is the fact that it's fresh and you know firm and flavorful and fragrant um so i'm just gonna chop some ahead of time and keep it separate and then when we're ready to eat it we'll just toss it on top after it's been warmed up see how thick it is like it doesn't want to come out and give it a little ploop and we're gonna stir it and then stir some more. 
and see my pasta is falling apart a little bit. That's unfortunate. Overcooked. All right, so because we were sitting here talking for so long, I'm basically just going to divide this up um, and then pour the rest of the sauce on top so I don't murder it completely. So this is going to make about four servings. So I think I'm going to make a dinner portion for the both of us, and then I'm going to make the other two into little lunch-sized portions. Hello, everybody. Hi, Desert Dowell. Thank you for stopping by. Rusty's going to follow me over into the cupboard. Come on. See, this is the one thing that I didn't get prepared, you guys. I apologize. I got all my ingredients ready and all my pots ready. Does anybody else have a Tupperware cupboard? I don't just have a drawer, I have a cupboard. Stay. Okay, look out, buddy. Rusty is very much hoping that I drop some on the floor. Little does he know that I would not let him eat it if I did, because garlic is very bad for dogs. Parsley, though, is very good for dogs, especially their stinky, stinky breath. He has tried to eat some of the herbs out of the herb garden, just in passing. Who could blame him? It probably smells really great. Hi, Cookie. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? I have five dishes that I'm trying to make today so I don't have to really cook, cook the rest of the week. I do have a couple of other cooking streams scheduled, but they're going to be like funsy streams, um, not like feeding us sort of streams. So this will be good. I am very excited about it. I also have a lot of running and weightlifting that I would like to do. And tomorrow is supposed to be game night at the in-laws house. So definitely won't be doing a cooking stream for that. Okay. We'll just add a little bit more to each of these guys. I am going to wind up with so many dishes today, though. I'll probably have to take a break and, like, do some in between all of these things because I'm going to have two pots going. I'm excited to make butter chickpeas for you guys. It's one of my favorite recipes. MVP loves it. Um, and I've been trying to add more different types of vegetables to it. When I first started making it, it's really like butter chickpeas slash butter tofu. The person who I got the recipe from, which I will put it in the show notes later, um, it is a blog. Like I was talking about the other day when I made another blog recipe, I don't have very good luck with, with blogs. I don't end up liking most of the stuff that I make from them. But this is like an actual favorite dish in our household. So this is great, perfect. So we've got one dinner and two lunches portioned out already. And all I have to do for those is cut up some tomatoes later. So now I'm going to, I'm going to have to wash this in order to make the butter chickpeas and the lentil soup at the same time. So let me put these in the fridge and I'll be right back. 
we're also going to wind up with not enough space in the fridge <laughs> again, which happens a lot. I did clean it out and everything, but it's also a thing that happens when you make kombucha. Look out, buddy. Trying to get your Instagram going for your jewelry biz. That sounds challenging. I have a friend I work with who has like a jewelry business too. And she does use Instagram for that as well. Oh, excuse me. Don't have a lot of parsley left. So we're just going to set that out to the side. Use this strainer to drain my chickpeas in a little bit. Yes, he is just following me around in the kitchen. Um, there he is. <laughs> he does get uh, trimmings, like veggie trimmings and stuff. But what he's really hoping for is that I'll drop something on the floor. It could happen, but also I will probably be giving him some vegetables. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is get the lentil soup going first um, because it takes longer to cook. The butter chickpeas I used to make in the slow cooker, um, but I'm just going to make it on the stove today so that it's done more quickly. Okay, so lentil soup. I don't really have this recipe written down, but I know how to make it. It's like... Um, Chris's mom, MVP's mom, gave me her like family recipe how to make it, and I've just been making variations of that ever since. Um, I believe I have it written down, what I usually do, uh, somewhere, and I'll be putting it online when I do show notes for the episode, um, but it's really simple to get started. So you want onions and garlic. So right now I'm going to use about one and a quarter onion because I have it left over from earlier. And this onion was falling apart. Otherwise I would have cut it more precisely. It's also been refrigerated, so it's not as horrible to smell at the moment. We'll see how I feel when the heat turns back on, or the heat warms it back up, whatever. Okay. So a lot of people will have you like, cut the onion, but not cut all the way through. And I mean, that's great and everything, but it really doesn't save you too much time to just cut it all the way through. It's not that messy. Do not eat the onions. Thank you. When I first started making <laughs> this soup, I would use onion powder because I did not like cutting onions. And you can definitely do that. It's just not gonna taste as good. I'm also gonna do like four cloves of garlic. And I'm not going to mince them, I'm just going to crush them and chop them. Because I hate cleaning the mincer. And of course I don't have my carrots ready. Whoops. 
Oh well. Come on. Okay. Now it smells a little painful in here. Desert Owl, did I see that you had a table with your jewelry set up somewhere, or was that somebody else? <laughs> Ow, my face. There we go. Four cloves of roughly chopped garlic. Garlic does equal yum. You guys, I don't even have real carrots. I just have baby carrots. I'm just so used to there being carrots that I forgot that I don't have actual carrots. That's great. So the original recipe asks you to do two large carrots. So I'm just going to have to like eyeball a bunch of tiny carrots. <laughs> Carrots are carrots, but still. <laughs> I'll do two more. <laughs> do you ever have that problem? Am I the only person who has that problem? Mmm. Okay, so that's, since that's going so well, I'm going to go ahead and add my broth. Um, you want to do 32 ounces of broth, either homemade or store-bought. And obviously I did use some of the broth for the pesto, but it's fine. I only used like a quarter of it. It'll still be plenty tasty. And then I'm going to use um, 28 ounces of tomato sauce. And you can also use like Italian stewed tomatoes. That's a really good option. That's what I used to use, but they don't sell the stewed tomatoes at the store that I shop at. So this is what I have been doing instead. Now this recipe makes a lot. So one of the reasons I like it so much is because I can make it once and we can eat it for like two weeks. MVP kind of gets sick of having the same thing all the time, so I usually end up freezing some of it and I'll make us <laughs> eat it, woo, um, you know, like for a meal one week and then the next week and then I'll just have the leftovers for lunch because she, she's not a soup fan. She thinks of soup as like a side dish as opposed to a meal. Even though like this, this soup is almost all lentils, it's extremely filling. But for some reason, MVP just, she just can't survive on soup, which is craziness to me. I love soup. So you're also going to add a pound of lentils. And I eyeballed this at the store and it's a little bit over a pound, but it'll be fine. Come on. Why are you barking? Whoop. 
No, sorry. I made the whoop noise. It's just little lentils flying all over the place. It's fine. No, leave it alone. And so, um, also because I used some of the broth, I'm also going to add a tiny amount of water, like a cup. Actually, come to think of it, the recipe is actually to add like six to eight more cups of water. So, the broth. <laughs> this is what happens when you make a recipe and you think you've memorized it and then you go to make it and it hasn't been like a really long time since the last time you did it and now you can't remember what it is. Okay, so I think actually in the original recipe, I the broth was not a thing. It was tomato sauce and then water and it was eight cans of water so i'm basically i'm just gonna fill up the rest of the pot with water <laughs> because i can't do math right now <laughs> but i swear i have the recipe written down <laughs> so it looks like i'm just gonna add four cups of water <laughs> oh hey I swear, I do occasionally know what I'm doing. Alright, so while I'm cutting these carrots, I'm going to start to bringing it up to a boil. Rusty loves carrots too, so I'm going to have to give him one. You want one? Come here. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> there you go, Rusty. Good boy. Celery is a really good option to put in the lentil soup as well. I don't have any because that's the only thing I would use it for. So instead of buying a huge thing of celery, I just opt not to. Please don't choke on the carrot. Desert Owl says need some green chilies. Well, this is kind of an Italian recipe. You think, uh, you think green chilies would go in an Italian lentil soup? I mean, I'm willing to try it, but it's not something I've ever done before. I did, um, I have a recipe called Saluda Vegan Mexicano, and it's basically a vegan Mexican cookbook, and there is a Mexican lentil soup in there. I made it, and it was way too hot for me. <laughs> There's still a jar of it in the freezer. It has chiles and adobo sauce in it. And it was delicious. I just can't eat it. <laughs> and I feel bad that it's in there. That's a good cookbook. I'll probably cook a few recipes out of that one for you guys. Um, I haven't tried very many though. A lot of them use oyster mushrooms as like the meat replacement. And you know, MVP hates mushrooms. So I haven't had a chance to make much of it because of that. Um, but there is a really, really good recipe for chorizo using um, garbanzo beans in place of meat that I really like. So this soup is going to be cooking for an hour, so by the time it's done, a lot of this water will have evaporated out of it. But I am going to add a teaspoon of salt. I 
and then two teaspoons of a seasoning, which I feel like today I'd rather have Italian seasoning. I also sometimes use basil. Um, but I feel like this is going to be flavorful and I want some savoriness to it instead of just sweetness. So two teaspoons of the Italian seasoning. And then I'm just going to do some fresh pepper. A lot. And a couple tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Come on. And that's it. Then we just boil it and then let it simmer for about an hour or until it's reduced. And then you've got like 12 bowls of lentil soup that you can refrigerate and freeze. And it's really amazing with some garlic bread, in case you were wondering. Desert Owl has a theory about what I call flatbread cultures. <laughs> Lentil soup is also made in Northern Africa and they make it spicy. Okay, I can see where you would get that. <laughs> I, I need a third camera, you guys, or like to be able to change the setup so there's an over the stove um, camera as well. Maybe I need a camera like right here and it can show like a really far apart view of everything. We'll see. Okay, so what I'm going to get started on next is the butter chickpeas. And I need my pan. Look out, buddy. You guys having a good time so far? Do you have any questions? I know you guys, you're pretty vocal about things when you when you have questions, but Desert Owl says, next time you ladies come out this way, I shall have to cook for you. Yeah. <laughs> you can ask, um, ask anybody. I'm up for a free meal. Anytime I don't have to cook. So like my name is Clem can cook, but that doesn't mean Clem always wants to cook <laughs> or that I am always cooking because that's not the case. So I'm drinking mint kombucha at the moment. It's very good. I used fresh mint from my herb garden. And I really hope that um, the mint comes back again next year. I had some last year and it didn't, it didn't even make it through the summer. This one is really good though. And I keep, keep trimming it. I made a plum and mint infused water the other day. That was really delicious with a really old ganky plum like this one. Look at how squishy it is. I basically put this, like this type of plum and a like 10 inch sprig of mint in a jar and I just muddled it and then I filled it with water. It was so good. I didn't even finish it. It was like 32 ounces and I made it through about three quarters of the way because it was just too much. Okay, butter chickpeas. We're also gonna start with an onion. I'm not sure this onion is still good. We're gonna find out. So I'm gonna warm some oil in this little pan. And for this guy, I'm actually going to do onion slices because it's kind of like a curry. And um, I think the slices give it a really good, good like texture. So this onion has been in here for a long time. 
And it's definitely not good because it has no scent whatsoever. All right, so we're gonna use a red onion. <laughs> I don't think this recipe needs a red onion. Nope. Okay. We'll probably use half of this red onion because it might be a little too big to use the whole thing. You do not eat onions. No, onions are not for dogs. Love you, bye. And I'm just gonna do like really thin slices. Can you please not bark? And I'm just breaking them apart a little bit when I get them to the pan. Um, and for this, I am also going to do like four cloves of garlic. And I've got down to all these little itty bitty ones. Um, actually, I'm going to put the onion, the rest of the red onion in a baggie because it's going to like burn my face for the rest of the day if I don't. And then I'm just going to have to stop streaming because I'll be crying. We don't want that. Don't want that. Desert Owl, do you have any onion tricks? Everybody seems to have an onion trick. I used to work in a prep kitchen for like a really short period of time and um, their onion trick was just to do it under the vent hood <laughs> and to like lean back. It's not really helpful when you're cutting things. These need to be go away. You are hurting my face. Um, so I am going to start using a different spoon for this one because it's going to be two very different flavors. So the long skinny spoon is for the Indian food and the short spoon is for the Italian food. <sighs> Your onion trick is to cut a lot of them and to add them to everything. Okay. <laughs> That's not really what I was asking about, but it's a good trick. <laughs> See, some people think that the more you use onions in cooking, the less horrible it becomes on your face, but that's not the case. You just get accustomed to the fact that it's horrible on your face. You like, you like emotionally, not like physically. It always makes you feel terrible. If it does at one point, it always will. And same thing with the garlic, I'm just going to slice them. It's more like visually organic that way. No. Poor dog. He's like, this is my job. Why do you deprive me of my job? Because I love you and I don't want you to die. Okay. Soup is simmering deliciously. Looks great. And now what we're going to do is wait for this to like caramelize and then we're going to add all of the liquid ingredients. 
So I've got this can of chickpeas that I'm going to rinse. I used to go out of my way and make like a pound of chickpeas dry and cook them in the slow cooker um, to save money. And I just don't have the time or the room in my refrigerator to keep them anymore. Ever since I started brewing kombucha, the real estate in the fridge has become very scarce. So it is totally my fault, but... Desert Owl says, cut them close to running water and rinse everything off with cold water seems to help. That is a good trick. Okay, so my beans are ready. Um, and for this, we're going to use a can of tomato sauce and a can of traditional coconut milk. I got really confused for a second. I was like, I only have one recipe left. Why do I have two types of tomatoes? I don't. I have two types of recipes left. Derp. So for this, I don't want the onions to be like super, super, super cooked. Um, because part of the appeal is that they're still whole when you go to eat them. So that looks great to me. So I'm just going to add my liquid ingredients, and then I'm going to chop my vegetables and add those too. Um, so like I was saying about this recipe earlier, um, when I first started making it, I followed the directions. And basically she said, or she used chickpeas and tofu. Um, but considering the fact that there's chickpeas in it, I mean, you don't need necessarily the extra tofu, I mean the extra protein from the tofu. So I started doing like um, cauliflower and potatoes in place of it, and it worked out really well. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do some, um, some red pepper and some squash and a potato. MVP really does like it with the tofu, but I like it with the potatoes. And I'm the one making it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add these chickpeas just to get them out of the way. And I will also add my spices. So I need to dig out the garam masala and chili powder. Ginger. I already got salt. And then I need my curry powder. I think that's it. Okay. So, need a tablespoon of each the curry powder and the garam masala. And these, both of these, I did get from an Indian grocer. And I hate to say it, but I have had them for a few years. Doesn't have a Best Buy date on it, though. I love this curry powder. It's really good. I'm not sure where the closest Indian grocery is to where we live, but... Um, we're going to have to check it out soon because I am almost out of curry powder. I mean, you can definitely get like regular curry powder other places, but considering how great this one is, I would definitely want to keep getting the actual Indian stuff. So a half a teaspoon of salt. The only bad thing about making all these dishes at one time is that it's going to smell really weird in here later with the lentil soup and the butter chickpeas going at the same time. And then when those are done, I'm going to make jackfruit tacos and black beans and rice. So at least those kind of go a little bit more similarly together. Okay, half a teaspoon of ginger. 
and a teaspoon of chili powder. Okay, spices are all done. And just give it a little stir. When I first started making curries and things like that, um, MVP was very suspicious of any of them that had coconut milk in them because she hates coconut flavored stuff. You know, I'm pretty sure that this squash isn't good anymore. Dang it. It's very brown. Well, poop. Um, I have a butternut squash. And it's very squishy, so that's probably not good either. Okay, so I guess I'm just doing peppers and potatoes. I wonder if I have... I really don't have anything else. If I wasn't streaming, I would go get... I would go get a squash, because that's really what I wanted to put in there. Oh, here's some more peppers. Oh well. At least I got extra potatoes for the event in the event that this happened. So basically I'm doing half of a red pepper and then two Yukon gold potatoes. Begrudgingly. might have some frozen butternut squash. I could put some of that in there. But then it's going to have a lot of potatoes in it. I guess I don't need it. Oh well. I just used this squash the other day. Why is it bad already? Ah. Just like... Yeah, I used it on like Thursday because I had blo Friday? Friday, because I made another curry on Friday. This is lame. I have complaints. I want to bring it back. All right. Well, that's everything. That's everything I can do for now. So it's time to clean up. And it's time to clean. Um, yeah, so I made some rice. So I think what I'm going to do next is divide the rice up to get ready for these, um, these curry bowls. And I also have to remember that I need two cups of rice for my black beans and rice when I make those. Um, I'm gonna go AFK for like two seconds so I can blow my nose, and Zeus is also gonna BRB. <laughs> Look out, Rusty. But I will be right back.
Hello, 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 microphone. <laughs> okay. Oh, my eyes are still burning from that stupid onion. Soup looks really great already, you guys. I think it's about halfway through cooking. I don't remember. I didn't set a timer. But I feel like what I'm going to do is set a timer for the curry. And uh, when it's 30 minutes from now, I'll just consider the, um, the lentil soup done. Because it's probably been about 30 minutes for that guy already. I don't know. Do you guys remember? New plan. We're going to sit and chat. Rusty, do you want to come sit in my lap? Come on, buddy. Come on. Jump. Jump. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. Come on. Jump. Jump. Yeah, there you go. You got it. You're okay. <laughs> <sighs> Say hi, Rusty. I thought maybe we could play Ask Rusty 20 Questions. <laughs> Is there anything you guys want to know about Rusty? And he will answer you. <laughs> um, in case anyone was wondering, the kombucha stream this is happening this week on Wednesday at 3 o'clock-ish. I will be making more kombucha. I actually went into a stream yesterday, another vegan cooking stream. And she asked me what kind of stuff that I streamed. And I said, you know, meal prep, which is basically what she was doing. And then I said, I also do kombucha. And she's like, I don't think I've ever had it before. And everyone in the chat was like, oh, it's so gross. You won't like it. <laughs> Unfortunately, my curry is bubbling, so I have to stir it. You want to help? Of course. Yeah, you're okay. Yep, you're okay. Mwah. It smells good? It smells good? What? You're okay. You're okay. You say hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> We're going to have to do doggo streams. You want to do some doggo streams? Yeah. Yeah. And play fetch and stuff. We can do that in the future. <laughs> do you see yourself on the computer? Look. Do you see Rusty? No? Ah, <laughs> well. It's disappointing that we're in a lull. I guess I can get my vegetables chopped for other things. Get out of the way, please. Yeah, I can definitely do that. So the, um... The recipe that I'm making for the Chipotle jackfruit tacos is from the Forks Over Knives website. Um, and it does basically have you making like a potato-y filling to go with the jackfruit. Um, so I think I can get the veggies ready for that. Um, yeah. It's so funny. Recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon of the minced chipotle in adobo sauce. A quarter teaspoon. Like, it's so spicy. You just need a quarter of a teaspoon. Okay, so. Let me get my little bowl out. This is a good size. And. It says to cut a medium potato. Into quarter inch dice. And Rusty's back. You don't eat raw potatoes. You boo boo. 
Thank you, big goober. No, you don't eat potatoes. I mean, you could, but I can't see that there's any benefit for you. Have you guys heard of forks over knives before? If you're into um, trying to learn how to make healthier dishes, um, it's a great place to start. It's it's on the extreme side. They're like um, their thing. They they call it whole food plants ba plant based. So they don't use any oil, and they're a very low fat sort of um, driven community, which is technically better for you, but. I can't go without my avocados, and I definitely can't go without nuts, or, um, what are those other things? Coconuts. Yeah, coconut oil. It's like one of my favorite things. I just, I don't, I wouldn't be able to function if I basically sacrificed everything, you know? Like, it's good to be healthy, but you have to be at healthy in moderation because if you're not you like absolutely go crazy especially if you don't eat meat that's one of the things that um mvp and i had a problem with um when we first started trying to be healthy we cut out oil and we didn't have like any sugar or anything like that and of course the diet plan that we were on you know, I never set a timer. Alexa, set a timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. But anyway, it was, you know, one of those clean eating programs um, created by a fitness instructor, but it wasn't catered towards vegetarians or vegans. So, like, we calculated the amount of calories we were, we were getting on a regular basis, and it was, like, 900. And, like, we were starving and miserable. So ultimately we decided that oil free was not going to work for us because of that. Reduced oil, now that's something that I've totally gotten behind, but you can't cut everything out that's bad for you. Otherwise, all you'd be doing is sitting around eating things like bananas and potatoes constantly. Um, one of the books that was in my training program for uh, holistic nutrition uh, it gave an example of different types of lunches, and one of them was four baked potatoes topped with salsa. And I'm like, there's no way that in the half hour break that I'm allowed during a workday, I could eat four baked potatoes for lunch. Like, a baked potato is about 90 calories by itself. And then what you put on top of it is the stuff that keeps you going, you know, like, calories aren't bad for you. Calories are a measurement for, for a, like, the potential fuel that you get out of a food. Uh, Desert Owl, yeah, homemade salsa would definitely be a good one. Like, um chopped fresh tomatoes, cilantro, red onion. Okay, everything's bubbling, boiling away, looks great. Um, so the recipe calls for two cloves of minced garlic, and I don't take garlic lightly, so I'm doing four small cloves instead of two. Garlic is serious business. I'm highly suspect of any recipe that doesn't have herbs or spices in it.
So, like I was saying, the uh, with this recipe being from Forks Over Knives, it um, it doesn't have any oil in it, so all of these things are going to be cooked at the same time. The uh, potato, onion, and garlic are going to be cooked in oil um, in a pan before the rest of the ingredients are added. So that's why I'm getting them ready all at once. And for the onion, it's also a quarter inch dice. It recommends two cups worth. This is going to be about a cup, but this is the only onion I have left. So it's going to have to do. And we're just going to put this in the microwave so I don't have to smell it. That's it. So, let's read the rest of this here. Oh, my eyeballs. <laughs> All right. So I could get the rest of the ingredients ready in another bowl. <clears throat> um, what are you referring to, Desert Owl? Like cooking without oil or? Where is my jackfruit? Hello, jackfruit. Anybody? Um, the jackfruit that this recipe suggested um, is water packed, and this is just like lightly seasoned, no liquid. So the texture might be a little bit different, but I feel like it's probably going to be better. Oh, you said there are recipes without herbs. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. I just don't feel like they would be any good. So this is jackfruit. Jackfruit is a fruit. <laughs> um, and it's like, got a very meaty texture to it. Um, a lot of people will use it in place of pork to make shredded pork dishes or like uh, shredded chicken, but you do need to season it. Otherwise it just kind of tastes like a bland fruit. They do have the same company. The jackfruit company has um, like pre-made barbecue jackfruit, which is really delicious. Um, I definitely recommend it if you're trying to be healthier, but you still want some barbecue. Just to give you an example, so there's approximately three servings per container of about a half a cup each. I can see that. Um, <laughs> there's only 60 calories in a half a cup, and this is the plain kind. So if you added the spices and seasonings and stuff, it might be a little bit more, but still, it's, it's not very many calories. Okay, and then the tomatoes for this recipe are just regular diced tomatoes, and it says with their juice. So I'm just going to pour this whole thing in here. And one of my spices. Taco seasoning. I have fajita seasoning. I guess that's all I have. I think that might be the only option. Whoops! 
Run away, elderberries. Yeah, I don't see taco seasoning. Oh well, this should be pretty close. Um, taco seasoning, smoked paprika. Is MVP home? Um, and then I need my adobos. Nope, must have been the neighbors. No MVP out there. <laughs> um, so I actually made one of those recipes. The um recipe out of the um Mexican cookbook I was talking about. I made with dried chipotle peppers one time and it was really, 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 really hot. It was like too hot. Um, and the reason was because I could not find these canned ones anywhere. Um, but I found these at Walmart. How old does a berry have to be to become an elderberry? That's a good question. That's a very good question. I don't know the answer, but I do know that elderberries make a delicious kombucha. Ah! <laughs> So I'm literally going to use, like, a teeny tiny amount of this stuff. Drying the peppers out makes them much stronger. I figured because, like I said, I could not eat that soup. It probably would have been a lot better if it was just, uh, canned. I even tried to, like, cut it back a little bit to compensate because I knew that would be the case. I need a fork. Fork for the peppers. That is a spoon. Okay. Look out, little dude. It's ridiculous that I only need a quarter of a teaspoon of these. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have them in my refrigerator for a long time and they're gonna go bad <laughs> because I'm not using them for anything else. Always best to use them fresh or roasted. Well I guarantee you I'm not gonna be able to find them um, fresh or roasted here. New Hampshire is like a food desert or a good food desert. Even my mother, who tries to stay really positive about everything, the other day said that New Hampshire sucks. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty close. There we go. All that work. <laughs> it's almost like I didn't use any of them. Okay, so three tablespoons of taco seasoning. That's paprika. Whoops. Desert Owl, have you ever tried jackfruit? Apparently you can get it around here like as a fruit, like a whole fruit. One of my friends from work was telling me about it. I've never seen them in person. One tablespoon smoked paprika. Oh my gosh. I feel like these are going to be way too spicy for me. Alright. MVP's going to love it. Okay. We're all caught up.
Honestly, I think the lentil soup is done. I'm going to take some of it out and taste it. And then if it is, we can move on. Can you guys hear the bubbling through my lavalier microphone? I'm just curious. Ah! Ooh, ow! Hot, hot, hot. Hot and bubbly. My poor finger. I have once at a Hare Krishna restaurant. It was okay. But how they were using it was kind of odd. Tell me how they were using it. Like, I'd like to know how non-Americans, like, I know that they were probably American, that's not what I meant. Um, Non-vegans, I guess is a good way to put it. And I, I know that the Hare Krishna are probably also vegan anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, how would you use it other than in, like, barbecue recipes? Don't burn the clam, sorry. I tried. It hurts. Uh, so here's my soup. It's very thick, like I was talking about. Um, it's extremely hearty. It's one of the reasons why I like it so much. Mmm. That is very satisfying. It has like a really great blend of the spices and vinegar. Like the vinegar is not overpowering. You can tell that there's like an added sweetness to it, but it's not like, oh my gosh, there's vinegar in here. You mainly just taste the lentils and some sweetness and some savoriness from the Italian seasoning. Mmm. That's good. Okay. Soup is done. Perfect. And I'm going to set it off to the corner so I can move on. Look out, buddy. And I know I've been saying that I'm getting ready for the jackfruit tacos, but the, um, the black beans and rice is literally going to take five minutes to make. So I am actually going to make that first. Um, which requires a different cookbook. So I'm going to have to go grab that for you. And this is like a special segment of the show that I want to talk about stuff for a little bit first. Desert Owl says, this was a vegan restaurant at their temple in Dallas. They were using it instead of chicken in tandoori and the chunks were too large with the centers being undercooked and underspiced. Yeah, I can see how that would happen. Well, that's unfortunate. I've heard about that place actually. Um, one of my friends, like really loose acquaintances, used to go there. And I've never been myself, but it seems like a pretty cool place. Okay, so I was having the conversation with um, someone in Discord, the um, Explorers Guild Discord the other day, about um, how to eat healthy things when you really like to eat non-healthy things. So one of the suggestions that I gave to her was to add more vegetables to the things that she already eats. And this is something that I started doing um, back when MVP and I started working out and trying to be healthier and stuff like that. And um, one example that I can provide is, like, say you're just making pasta with marinara sauce. Just add some shredded greens to that and you've already increased the amount of nutrition that you get from it. So like those bags of shredded kale you can get 
just add a handful of that to the pasta water while you're cooking the pasta. And then it cooks in the same amount of time. You just drain it and add the marinara sauce and you're ready to go. Desert Owl says, for the most part, the food there was great and I would recommend it to anyone. That's good to know. So this conversation got me to thinking about how even I still have this problem where I want to make really rich, hearty dishes um, because I do have a very labor intensive job. It's a very physical job. I burn a lot of calories. And then on top of that, I do exercise. Um, so obviously I do eat a lot of beans and rice and grains and heavier types of foods, but I still need to be able to eat a lot of vegetables. So I remembered this recipe that MVP and I used to make all the time um, for black beans and rice, and we would serve it with little corn muffins. Um, so I thought to myself, this would be a great way to have like a bowl. So basically what I'm going to do is make the recipe for spicy black beans and rice, and then I'm going to serve it as a salad. So I'm going to have my shredded lettuce, my avocado, and some raw peppers, and then, you know, a serving of the black beans and rice, and then whatever salad dressing. I actually don't like salad dressing, so I'm just going to put some oil and vinegar on it. But MVP can put whatever dressing on it that she wants. So that's like a really great example of how you can take something hearty and turn it into something with additional veggies in it. Um, the same thing with this curry here. So like I said, the original recipe was just basically tofu and chickpeas. For a few months now, though every time that I make it, I add more vegetables to it. So last time I made it, I think I added zucchini and pepper, and I was going to add the squash to it this time. So I added some peppers, and I added the potatoes, and when I serve it, I'm going to add chopped fresh baby spinach and cilantro to it to give it some greens. Um, and that's really going to expand the amount of nutrition that you get from it without really taking away from the flavor. So it's just little things like that. You can definitely, like, say you have a sandwich for lunch, you can add baby spinach to the sandwich instead of lettuce, or you can add raw vegetables, cucumbers, peppers, um, even canned artichoke hearts. Artichokes are really high in antioxidants. They're extremely good for you. Raw onion. So just little things like that to help make things more healthy without taking it away from what it is you're actually eating. Like obviously you want to eat the thing that you're eating, but you also want to be able to eat healthy things and not hate it while you're doing it. So that's what we're doing here. So this recipe comes from a Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. And it's this one. Uh, MVP and I called this the Old Testament because we had two books when we first got together. This was the Old Testament. And then we have another Better Homes and Gardens cookbook that we call the New Testament. <laughs> because we literally went to these every time we needed food. Um, and I don't mean that as a way to offend anybody, but just that we actually, we cared about these books so much. <laughs> That's how much we cared about them. Um, so I believe this recipe is online and I hope to link to it, but I'll tell you what I'm making while I'm doing it. Um, so basically what we're going to do is again, saute some onions and garlic and then add some canned beans and some Mexican style tomatoes and some spices and some cooked rice to the pan and then you just mix it up and cook it for a few minutes and then it's all done. Black beans and rice made great burritos. That is also an excellent point. Um, that is a great recommendation. And in burritos, you can put lots of lettuce and tomatoes. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those people who's just like obsessed with avocado. Do you guys love avocado as much as I do? Like, I think I like it too much sometimes. I, I don't put it on everything, but I think about it a lot. And I think about ways of making it so that I can have more. 
So I've run into a problem where I don't have any more onions, you guys. Maybe I should try one of these to see if it's bad too. I mean, they all came out of the same bag. Don't you think that would mean that they're all crap now? Desert Owl says you can do them as lettuce wraps. That is true. Alright, this one doesn't smell bad. Okay. So it says half of a cup, so I'm going to do half of an onion. And it looks like it might get some adobo sauce on it, but I think that's fine. One thing that I was thinking about doing for the lentil soup was roasting some um, garlic to put like on top of it, but I don't think I'm going to get that involved with it. Have you ever just roasted garlic and ate it? It's so good. Well, Desert Owl, clearly you don't hate, uh, vegetables because otherwise you wouldn't be here <laughs> I appreciate um, the fact that you guys come and watch I really do like I know that um, you don't have to <laughs> but here you are and I'm definitely not going to hold your mutatarian ways against you I mean we got to be realistic about it right like, the majority of people are never going to stop eating meat. I'm not going to hate you for it. I mean, my family all eats meat. Doesn't matter to me. But still, people will come to me anyway and ask me questions about how to be healthier. So that's one of the reasons why I went to school. And one of the reasons why I thought having a stream would be a great way to provide that information to other people. Garlic problems. Come on, man. Hello. And all that dramatic jumping action, and it didn't even come out of the skin all the way. I remember years ago, I was like watching Martha Stewart or something. And she had this contraption that you put the garlic in. It was like a little silicone tube. And you just like roll it around in the tube and supposedly all the skin came off of the garlic. Needless to say, I don't see those available in stores regularly. So I don't have any idea as to whether or not they actually work. And since these are actually pretty big cloves of garlic, I'm just going to do the two. Zeus is back. Desert Owl says his garden would not be around if it if I did not enjoy veggies as well. I'm just glad MVP posted a link to your stream. Yeah, she's pretty great about that. She's so supportive. She's like the best person ever. Crap, you guys, I need another spoon. Where am I gonna keep this one to keep it separate?
I think I'm just going to do that risque thing and keep it on top of the pan. See, that's how much of a foodie you are, Desert Owl. You knew exactly what I was talking about. So, Desert Owl, do you watch, um, like, food shows, Food Network and stuff? Do you have a favorite show? I know what Zeus's is. Well, I mean, I say that, but I'm, I'm probably making a generalization. <laughs> Well, I mean, you talk about Guy Fieri all the time. I'm pretty sure that that's your favorite show. Am I wrong? Okay, I got to show you. Look at that. Look at this one. It looks so fabulous. Okay. So, do, 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 do. carefully stir in the beans and undra undrained tomatoes. I remember that MVP made this recipe one time and she added like a lot of red pepper flakes and it was inedible to me. Inedible. And actually the recipe calls for Mexican stewed tomatoes and these are Mexican diced tomatoes. I'm not sure if they're going to be the same. Alexa, stop. Um, so basically, I'm not going to add the red pepper that's recommended in this recipe until I taste it, just in case the chilies are too much for me. All right, so I basically, I added my can of diced tomatoes with chilies to the pan with my can of drained black beans. And I think I'm also gonna add some salt. Nope. Let's see, chopped onion, garlic, oil, beans, tomatoes, red pepper, and rice. Okay, so now that this is all in here, I'm basically gonna just increase the temperature until it starts to sizzle and then the liquid is gonna reduce, and then I'm just gonna mix in the rice, because the rice is already cooked. It's right here. Um, so my, t my um, timer went off for the butter chickpeas, so I'm going to see if the potatoes are cooked all the way through, and if they are, this puppy's done too. Probably not though, because potatoes, they do take a long time. Especially when you're boiling them. Desert Owl's show would have been Good Eats or Iron Chef. Those are great shows. Alton Brown is my hero. Zeus also likes Iron Chef. And Desert Owl dreams of taking on Bobby Flay, making him suffer. <laughs> I've gotten my dad many Bobby Flay books because he has a lot of grilling books. Um, I'm not sure if he's used a whole lot of recipes out of them, but... He does like to grill a lot. So, I mean, this is obviously cooked, but I'm just going to taste it to make sure that it's delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. I love this recipe. It's so great. Alexa, timer for 15 minutes. 
sorry if that was really loud. I forgot. I forgot about the lavalier microphone. My apologies for yelling in your face. <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just responding to MVP. Oh, Zeus didn't like Alton Brown? Well, I mean... Everybody has their own tastes. Mmm, this, this smells really, really great. I don't think I'm going to have to season it, though. So when it's done reducing, I'm basically going to just add the two cups of hot um, cooked rice, and then I'm going to store it. And basically, whenever we go to make our lunches for the bowls, I'm just going to put the like put a little container of the black beans and rice together, and then a big container of lettuce and all the raw things, and then we can warm up the black beans and rice put it on top and you have a really delicious hearty wholesome salad ready to go the only problem that I'm gonna have right now is figuring out where to put all these things so I think what I'm gonna do is get rid of this since I'm down to my last recipe I'm going to tape it to the cupboard. And start putting away some of these other things. So for the curries, I'm basically going to divide them up into individual portions. So I'm going to do a half a cup of rice on each of them. Assuming that I have enough rice, maybe I should take two cups out first of this kind, just to be sure. This was for broth. If I don't have enough rice for all these lunches, though, I do have some microwave rice as a backup, which everybody, everybody, everybody should have backup rice. Let me show you the box. I am absolutely in love with this rice here. You basically steam it in the microwave, and it tastes so good. It's just plain rice. You just steam it in the microwave for like three and a half minutes and it's like two really large servings. Um, yeah, it's really great. There you go. Grain Trust. They also have a white jasmine rice. Um, that's really good. I really do like the um, short grain brown rice though. It's my favorite type. Even when I make, like this kind that I made right now is a short grain brown rice. I just like the texture more. Hey buddy, you cleaning up after me? He's so helpful. Okay, so like I said, I'm just gonna scoop out half a cup of rice into each of these.
And then I'm gonna just spoon out some of this butter chickpeas curry stuff. This one. So let me show you what it looks like. Soupy and wonderful and delicious. The coconut milk makes it nice and thick and savory. It is so amazingly flavorful and fragrant. And the squash actually goes really well in it. Like the last time I did it, I had zucchini in there, but you could definitely use like a um, yellow squash, like when we did the curry, the peanut butter curry on Friday. Hey, bud. So the black beans and rice is pretty much thickened up. Let me show you what it looks like. Don't want all of the water to evaporate because it'll also flavor the rice. So let me taste it and make sure it's not going to kill me. The good news, the good thing about all this food that I have now is if the jackfruit tacos are too spicy, I have options. <laughs> As for other things I can eat. It is a little peppery. I think I'm just going to keep it the way it is. So I got my rice and I'm just going to put it together. And I think I am going to add a little bit of salt and black pepper just to taste. And I say black pepper, but I just mean fresh cracked pepper. We have a three chili pepper, not chili pepper, just three pepper blend. Um, that's really good. I like the complexity of having different types of peppercorns in there. I actually will use it in my kombucha when I make um, chai flavored kombucha, like six peppercorns. And I'll have a few different colors of each kind in there. So yeah, you just mix it up together real good, and that is it. I will definitely put pictures of an assembled bowl when I eat it early or later in the week, but that's what it looks like. You could also put like a whole corn kernels in here, that'd be really good. Done! Okay, so did I already put that half cup measure away? No, it's over here. Okay. So when you're dividing up this curry stuff, um, I wouldn't worry about portioning it out evenly. I would just fill it. These containers are two cup containers. So I'm basically just going to fill it to slightly underneath the line. Um, because you're basically going to get about a cup to one and a half cups of curry in each of your containers. And I'm still going to have extra. So I think I need to get one more. One more container. Oh, thank you, Desert Owl. It really is good. You should definitely try the recipe when I get it online. I don't have any more of those little bowls, so I'm gonna use this purpley guy. And I think I'm actually just going to wait on divvying the rice out for that one and then just store it in here. 
this one did get a little burnt to the bottom of the pan. I, <laughs> I am feeling so accomplished right now. I'm so pleased. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I really didn't think I was going to be like able to do all of this and here we are. But like I said, the problem is going to be storing all of these things. <laughs> so let me get my lids and then I'm going to get a container for the beans <laughs> if I have one. And I don't know if you guys know, but there's a cat in my way. <laughs> I have to walk over her in order to get into the cupboard over here. I think I might put the bean mixture in a jar and just keep it in the refrigerator and then I can shake it around. And then for the soups, I do have this one I can put together. There's those, and then I need lids for my little butter chickpea dishes. One, two, three. <laughs> this is the most riveting part of the show. Will Clem survive the Tupperware drawer? Will she return? Okay, excuse me, buddy. Oh, and then of course I forgot the lids of that. Oh well, I'm gonna have to like go on trips and stuff. Or, you know, just wait until the show's over to finish up. Probably a better option. Okay. So true story, I did one time put soup in a jar and then I put it in the freezer and it hadn't cooled down all the way yet and it totally cracked in the freezer and I was none too happy about it. It was a jar of lentil soup actually. <laughs> the very lentil soup we are making today. So keeping stuff in jars is great, but um, you definitely want it to cool before you put it in the freezer for that purpose. Um, also things expand in the freezer, so you don't want to fill it up all the way because then it will also break. Also, if you buy brand name jars as opposed to generic jars, that will also prevent that from happening, potentially. Perfect fit. Cool beans. Oh, hey, Kate's here. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Kate. I was talking to them about you earlier. I was having some of my kombucha and I told them that you, you weren't sure you had had any kombucha. And then everybody else in your chat was like, kombucha's gross. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm making pretty much everything that's in the stream title. We've done um, everything except for the jackfruit tacos, which I'm going to do next, and that's going to be our dinner for tonight. So what I have in here is my black beans and rice, and I'm out of containers, so it gets to be in a jar. And I was just warning them about the dangers of putting things in the freezer before they're cool, because I had a soup um, explode into a million pieces in the freezer. Um, okay, so this is going to be for some of my soup. This is the part of the show where we clean up a little bit because we're out of pots and pans. <laughs> um, Kate, was it a recipe or was it at a... 
Does anybody remember what the timer is for? <laughs> because it's going off right now. <laughs> Alexa, stop. I honestly don't remember what the timer is for you guys. <laughs> Maybe it was for the black beans. Um, yeah, but the, uh, the jackfruit tacos that I'm making is a forks over knives recipe. And I haven't tried it before. I'm worried that it's going to be wicked spicy because it has chipotles and adobo sauce in them. And like a tablespoon of smoked paprika. But I'm going to try it. So same thing with this guy here. This lentil soup. Um, I don't have enough lunch containers. So what I'm going to do is put our dinner portion together. And then I'm going to put it in some jars to store it. Because that's the only thing I have left. And I don't have my, oh, I do have my little scooper. Let's see if you can see this too. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, those are the only ones that I've tried that I've liked um, that are actually good, good. Like the other ones I feel like just taste really vinegary. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I started making kombucha at home. It's still pretty vinegary, but it's not as bad. And I believe I have the Forks Over Knives cookbook, but I was just online and I googled jackfruit tacos the other day and I pulled it off of their website. So I probably also have it in the cookbook. I just didn't think to look there. Honestly, my kitchen is so small, I put all the cookbooks in a cupboard. Um, <laughs> so I don't really look at them regularly. But I need to start doing that more. Okay. Gotta get some more jars. <laughs> yeah, no, when I said that, I thought about you and I was like, well. <laughs> Okay, it's not that small. <laughs> I used to have a kitchen like almost exactly like yours though. Don't fall. Okay, so I just have the one funnel, so now I'm gonna have to rinse the funnel off. The only thing that I don't like about meal prep day is that I have to do like 80 billion dishes when I'm done. Like in order to make the jackfruit tacos, I'm going to have to clean a pan. <laughs> So what all did you make um, on your stream yesterday, Kate? I couldn't stick around. In fact, it was like like a fluke that I even saw that you were online. Like I just happened to um, check out the food community when um, I was starting to watch another stream. And I saw that you were doing vegan meal prep. And I'm like, oh my god, I have to stop in here and check it out. Most of the time when I look for vegan streams, there's nothing on. I've followed a couple other channels, but um, I never seem to be able to catch them. It looked like you were roasting veggies and you had a lot of like rice and kale and stuff. It, yeah, it definitely didn't seem as involved as um, what I'm doing today, but I have um, I have a picky eater, which is not true. Um, we're both actually pretty picky. Like um, my wife and I don't 
uh, like to eat the same thing all the time. So if I tried to do like what you were doing with the rice and the veggies and stuff, she would want that once and then she wouldn't eat it again for like three weeks. I have to make like Indian food and Mexican food for her in order for her to eat anything that I cook. Roasted sweet potato, zucchini, squash, and carrots, put a little rice, and some kale. It does sound really good. I've definitely done sort, sort of stuff like that, but, um, yeah, MVP, she's not a roasted veggie girl. She's a really funny vegan, actually. She doesn't like mushrooms, <laughs> and she doesn't like eggplant. She doesn't like a lot of things that people use in place of meat <laughs> in recipes. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. I try to keep my dinners exciting since my lunches are same old, same old. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good plan. Oh my gosh, Kate, I don't like salad either. <laughs> salad is so boring. <laughs> like um, the black beans and rice that I made, I'm basically going to put on a salad, but it's not going to be salad by itself. It's going to have like flavor <laughs> because of all of the heavy stuff that I'm putting on it. It is so dull. Like I get that it's healthy and everything, but... I know, like, it's hard for some people to be picky about vegetables, but I just feel like if I know how to cook things, I don't, I don't want to just have salad. It's more of a me problem than anything else. So those are all extremely hot, and they're just going to hang out here and cool off at room temperature. And I'm done. I gotta clean my pan, and then I'm gonna make these tacos. Desert Owl, enjoy salad when done with the right greens. So what kind of greens would you pick for your salad, Desert Owl? Do you like green leaf lettuce or spring mix? Does a pasta salad count as a salad? Well, I guess in terms of it being cold. <laughs> I actually saw a recipe for like a sweet potato pasta salad in the No Meat Athlete cookbook um, that I actually thought about making. Okay, here we go. Last recipe. And because it's a forks over knives recipe, I'm using water to cook these things instead of oil. Do you have a Pinterest? I have a Pinterest. I don't use it very much at the moment. And I'm trying to get better about that. But I don't remember what it's called. I, I don't have a Pinterest for me at the moment. I have a Pinterest for like a really old blog a long time ago and I don't remember which one it was <laughs> so I'd have to look it up but yeah if and when I, I get it back together I will definitely let you know Pinterest is really good for recipes and things like that so okay oh yeah my veggies I put in the um, microwave because I didn't want to smell them 
Okay, so in a skillet over medium low heat, medium low, saute the potatoes, onions, and garlic in a quarter cup of water for 10 minutes or until the onions are tender. So that's what we're doing. Okay, I can't believe we're all caught up. The only thing I'm gonna have to do after this is make the fixins for the tacos, like the shredded lettuce and the tomato and my avocados. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, yeah. <laughs> I hate that point where you get caught up and you don't have anything to do and you're just like, so, how's it going? <laughs> like, I'm usually pretty good about talking about stuff while I'm doing stuff, but as soon as I'm done, like, with the doing stuff por portion, I'm out of ideas. Do you guys have any, um, plans for this evening? I'm just going to watch MVP stream on the DDO stream, because that's what I do on Mondays. I might actually also, like, use the treadmill for a little bit, and I have to make sure I get all my stuff ready for tomorrow, because um, I go to bed at, like, 8 o'clock. What does the recipe have the jackfruit marinade in? Well, so it actually didn't ask me to marinate it, but I have been because I got everything ready at the same time. So it's um, some tomatoes, just regular diced tomatoes, and then some chipotle in adobo sauce, which I forgot to chop, you guys. I'm looking at it right here. I just put it in this bowl. It's only a quarter of a teaspoon. <laughs> Um, and then some smoked paprika and some taco seasoning. So it has been marinating in the tomatoes for sure. Yeah, I only looked this recipe up because the store that I shop at finally got this unflavored jackfruit. They have the flavored kind from the jackfruit company, barbecue and Tex-Mex, and I like the barbecue one but I've never made anything with just plain jackfruit before, and I wanted to try it out. Desert Owl's gonna be playing some D&D &D with the fam. That's exciting. How many kids do you have? I don't remember. And how old are they? I know you have at least one. Hot, hot, hot. Man, this thing is going to take forever. Warm up first, and then we'll put you on low. Jeez Louise. Uh, I'm going to start putting some stuff in the refrigerator if I can find room. Let's see, all of those can stay there. And get one of my avocados out. It's so fun having a lavalier microphone, you guys. It really is. Chopped tomato, and then I need my tortillas. I have like 80,000 tortillas. I don't know. Do I want tortillas or taco shells? I kind of feel like I might want taco shells. We'll just have these. Do, do, do. Of course, I forgot my lettuce. Alexa, timer for 10 minutes. Fifteen and twelve, those are good ages for Dungeons and Dragons. 
Happy belated birthday. Thank you, Kate. It was a good one. We played um, Harry Potter Trivial Pursuit as a community, and it was a lot of fun. And Rusty was there. Have you met Rusty yet? Come here. Oh, it's my doggo. He's a poodle and he's adorable. <laughs> you <wanna> say hi? <laughs> he actually hates it when I stream because he doesn't understand what's happening. But he does like it when food gets put on the floor for him. It's a Rusty. <laughs> Okay, so I'm following the directions. It's going to cook for like 10 minutes and stuff. And then I just have to add this stuff to it. And we're going to cook it some more for like 10 more minutes. And then we're supposed to break the jackfruit into smaller pieces. And then I have to add cilantro and lemon juice. The cilantro is going to be from outside, so I will have to go grab some. But I am going to like... Put some of that stuff away like I was talking about. Say please. You guys don't see it, but I have like a, a lighting kit set up off to the side and it makes it very difficult to get to and from some places. Um, I'm gonna use this chair to hold some spinach <laughs> while I put everything away. Um, yeah, this is hot. But, I don't know. Everything will definitely fit. I just need to, like, finagle some things around. I'm so excited about this. Kate, I was telling everybody earlier that I've never tried to make all of our food for the week in advance. Like, I usually make, like, one or two meals, and then we'll make a couple things during the week. But... I have some other streams scheduled and I don't want to like sacrifice our ability to eat regular food in order to have those streams. So that's one of the reasons why I'm getting all this stuff out of the way. Also, I have a treadmill and I haven't really used it a whole lot since we got it. So I'm trying to like start running again and being responsible about that stuff. <laughs> All right, Kate. Bum, 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 bum. Um, so I don't think I'm going to be doing it this week, but next week I'm going to start the whole um, streaming cooking games thing in addition to streaming cooking. And I haven't made my Loto character yet, but I plan on doing that sometime this week. And I'm going to get that all set up so that, sorry, we, um, so that I can, um, do hobbity stuff. And then I'm going to get my cook, serve, delicious game installed on my new laptop and show you guys that too. It really is one of my favorite games. I was obsessed when I first started playing it. Move it. Okay. And I gotta put these away. <laughs> Does anybody play um, a cook on Lotro? Like, do you have any good guides um, how to max up your level? I know it's one of the um, the easier ones to level up fast. But I still, like, I've never, um, actually gotten very far with it. So I want to make sure I'm doing it right. So I'd really like to look into it and see if, um, there's some guides that I can check out to make the process go a little bit more smoothly. I know cooking isn't really a fun and exciting profession on Lotro, but I like it. I'm 
I think my very first character on Lotro was an elf. And I really didn't do any crafting until I, until I started playing Hobbit. And my first Hobbit was a hunter, forester. So I don't think I did cooking at all until I started making other characters. I do really like the mechanics of it. Um, cooking and farming is a really good combo. But I've never really, like, completed it, maxed it out or anything like that. So it's something I would like to do. Need to find like a good to do list or something. Okay, make a big bowl of lettuce. And this just had my potatoes in it, so we'll just use that. Bum, 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 bum. Desert Owl says, I have. Just mass cooking. Get the recipes from a skirmish camp that allow you to make large numbers at once. That is a great idea. Do you, um, are there more than one vocation for, that uses cook? Because I know that some of them have crossovers. Like I know farmer cook is one. Um, but I, I don't recall if any of them have different ones like is there um something I should do as opposed to the alternative that you would think of isn't um like the scholar profession scholar vocation doesn't have that have cook in it and there's one other one Farmer cook is the most useful. That's what I figured. Look out, buddy. I gotta rinse this lettuce. I need a plate. That way you can make almost everything you need. I figured. I, yeah, I've never really gotten into like the advanced level cooking stuff. I know MVP has. Um, she makes food for us on our 50 plus characters. Um, which I know sounds really bad for higher level stuff. But I don't get to play very much. I don't make a point to play very much is the thing. That's how I should put that. Oh my. So that got a little burnt. Thanks, guys. Okay. Well, it'll definitely have that caramel flavor to it. Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? She didn't hear me. The air conditioner is on in the other room. Just turn it down some more. Jeez Louise. <sighs> I miss Kin Night too, Zeus. I have this problem where I don't have fun. And it is a problem. Like, there's things I want to do. <laughs> and I don't do them because I do other things instead. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing, like, these meal prep things. Is so that I don't have to, like, only do chores during the week.
Alexa, stop. Okay. So it's been 10 minutes. I'm going to continue with the recipe. It got a little burnt. Look at all the caramel. <laughs> but I guess it'll be fine, right? So I'm just going to add everything else as per the instructions. Mix it up real good and let it cook for 10 more minutes. I actually have made a number of recipes from the Forks Over Knives cookbook and they are really good for being super healthy for you. Um, so if anybody's interested in adding more oil-free, salt-free, sugar-free meals, to their menu. Um, it's a great resource and they, they have a lot of stuff online for free. They have support groups that you can sign up for. They actually have a lot of stuff and um, they have a lot of professionals coming up with their content too. It's not just like, like what I was talking about on Friday where you have like, you go get a recipe from a blog and it turns out terrible because the blogger is an amateur. And I know that's coming from an amateur myself, but you know what I mean. Okay. Alexa, timer for 10 minutes. Okay. Um. So, Kin Knight, um, I am once again off mostly on Mondays, so we should try to work that out. Oh, I hate when that happens. You know, a tiny little piece of avocado shell stuck to your little innard there. Probably should have got a spoon for this. You're right, it's still not set in stone. I usually get my schedule like on Thursdays. Um, so, I mean, what we can do is like tentatively schedule it. And then, um, you know, if I can't do it, we can just cancel. But. I know, it's not always the best scenario. It didn't work. Come on. Oh yeah, you're doing a lot of traveling over the summer. A lot of people do. MVP wants to do some touristy stuff, so um, Sunday might be a good day for us to go do that. But um, we'll try to think of the next weekend or something like that. I'll have to talk to her about it. She does have a lot of fun doing it though. She likes <laughs> she likes it when I play because she likes seeing my reactions to the storyline um cuz I haven't seen them before. <laughs> Which is fun. Yay, Clem's still on. I sure am. I'm on my last thing actually. Which is miraculous and amazing and I'm so proud of myself. Welcome back, Jinx.
Are you for real? You're going to Canopy? I just, I just went to Canopy yesterday. <laughs> I was actually really disappointed because they were, like, advertising on their website how, like, uh, Castaway Island is going to be open in the summer of 2018, and it's still not open. It barely looks like any work has been done on it. So I don't want to, like, burst your bubble or anything. I know, right? I was like, there's going to be a tiki bar. There's going to be all kinds of new water rides. No. There's, like, one ride, and it's hidden way in the back, and everything else is still just wood and, like, sand. It'll be your first time there. It's really cool. I mean, it's not Six Flags or anything, but I mean, you can go on like all of the rides unless it's 42 inches or under. No, <laughs> it's not. I'm sorry. I really wanted to go to the Tiki Bar. Go figure. I know you're surprised, right? <laughs> Tiki's. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed. <laughs> It looks really great, you guys. I'm just going to show it to you real quick. <laughs> Doesn't it? Still has a few minutes to cook, though. Um, tomato. Six Flags wasn't that great? What didn't you like about it? If it was there, there are too many people there, then I hate to break it to you, but um, there will also be too many people at Canopy Lake Park. But I do really like it. I've been going there since I was like six, so I'm a bit biased. Oh, really? Um, I had no idea that the Six Flags up here is small. Um, the one in Texas is pretty big. In fact, Texas, I think we went to the one in San Antonio. Uh, Jinx, Castaway Island is a water park portion of Canopy, and, um, they're not finished yet. If you go to their website, it says it's opening this summer, but there's literally nothing finished. <laughs> I think they might have one ride, um, and that's it. Come here, buddy. Come here. Doggo, tomato. Take it. There you go. Yummy. MVP, you can come home now. You can come home now. Um, we, uh, we only went on a couple of, uh, grown-up rides because, um, there were really long lines. I'm just texting MVP to see if she's on her way. Because the tacos are pretty much done. Tacos are done. Miss... Yo, face. Kissy. <laughs> um, yeah, we went on the teacups and we went on the Da Vinci's swing. 
The original Castaway Island Rain Fortress will be open Saturdays and Sundays from May 26th through June 10th. The Rain Fortress will then be open every operating day starting June 16th through Labor Day. Oh. Yeah. Well, we were still sad. The monkey bar must be what I'm looking forward to. My dad was saying that there is a water park in Candia if you guys wanted to go to a water park. I don't know what it's called, but they have a zip line too. You could look that up as an alternative or an addition to something in your trip. I'm not really big on the water park stuff. Like, I don't like swimming and stuff, but the baby really likes water. So that was really the motivation for doing it, wanting to be there and stuff. And also tiki. I like tiki stuff. Palapas are my jam. I really wanted to build one in the backyard, and MVP said that that would be horrible. And she told me no. These look and smell so awesome. Yeah, tubing, right? You guys went tubing other places, if I recall correctly. Alexa, stop. All right, it's done, you guys. I'm just waiting on MVP. I might have to eat it without her. This is what it looks like. I'm going to try it by itself. I'm still very scared that it's going to be too spicy for me. Let me get a piece of the jackfruit. Oh, I think she's home. Perfect. Perfect, excellent, amazing timing. Jackfruit is slippery. So here's a piece of the jackfruit. Be prepared for some barking to occur momentarily. <coughs> Scare me to death, that dog. Hi. Mm okay. It's good. Um. Don't get in here. I'm not sure the jackfruit absorbed a lot of the flavor. <laughs> yes, I was jump scared. <laughs> Which is funny because I heard you coming and I told them be prepared for borking. <laughs> and I still jumped <laughs> and the jackfruit fell out of my hand and went all over the place. <laughs> it's funny. It is funny. <laughs> it's so yeah, we're done. Um, I'm going to plate some up. We have a lot of tacos. Are you okay over there? Yeah. You can come on the stream. I talk about you constantly because most of the people who are in here are because of you. Come Look at here. you, boy. Look, it's a family party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, what kind of tacos do you want? Because we have white and corn and white corn. So you can have like literally any kind that you want. <laughs> I'm on a beach. I bought, I mean, we bought these today, yeah. but there's, there's flour tortillas in there too, if you want those. Oh, I like flour tortillas. You want to do those instead? Sure. Could fit more in those too. Jinx says hi. Hi, Jinx and Zeus. Hershey Park. I totally forgot about that place. I've never been there before. It's a Hershey Park. It's in Pennsylvania. Yes. In Hershey, Pennsylvania. It's a theme park. I was telling everybody that I was scared that they would be too spicy for me, but they taste pretty good. So I'm just going to make some tacos and we'll be all done. You ready for tacos? Sure. Did 
do these have to be heated up? Do you remember using these? I don't remember. No! Do not eat silicone little patches, it's stupid! It's just all over it, can't you read? <laughs> One, two, three, four. Oh, it's dirty in there. <laughs> Five. Hush. Why are you telling people things are dirty? Oh, I'm sneezy. Oh, I'm Cookie Mama's here. Yeah, she's come and gone a couple times. She's like food, though. <laughs> food. Really, I like food. I got a food roll. <laughs> You want three? Sure. Count on you to eat all my food. I'm out of scoopers. That's what I'm here for. Eat the foods. Eat the foods. I hope the potatoes are cooked all the way through. <laughs> Who you got there? Does she like it? They've all been very weirded out by the fact that I've been talking to myself for four hours. Yeah. They're okay with me talking to myself. Like yeah, you talking to yourself. I guess not. So just so you guys see what it looks like on the tacos, and then we just put some toppings on top. Here's some tomatoes. That's very accurate, Zeus. What? He says, Human, put me down. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yes. She's like, I tolerate this, but don't like it. I need beer. Squish, 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 and then lettuce. How was your sandwich? What kind did you get again? It said it was uh, tempe curry. Oh, yeah. I don't know where there was any tempe in there. It's out. Well, what was, it, what was it like? It was like the tofu um, salad, except curry-like. Yeah, like me. it was tempe. They steam it first, take some of the bitterness out of it. So here's tacos. Would you like to sit down and eat one and then tell everybody how much you like it? Sure. <laughs> and I will stand and eat one right here. I'm going to do a little maneuvering so that my plate doesn't drop on the cutting board. It's a lot happening in here. <laughs> it is, yeah. I, you guys, I followed the recipe Hi, exactly. Ducks. Oh, hey, ducks. We're just, uh, we're finishing up. <laughs> we're eating jackfruit tacos by Forks Over Knives. It's by Darshana Thacker. Um, and I'm going to link to the recipe when I put the show notes up. It's good. Can you guys hear me at all? What's a jackfruit? I have no idea. I'm eating it, though. Mm. A jackfruit is a fruit, and it resembles pulled meat, so they use it in barbecue and chicken recipes. You can hear it's cold. Woo! <laughs> oh, you're wooing because it's hot? Yeah! Oh. <laughs> it has chipotle and adobo sauce in it. I was very worried that I wasn't going to be able to eat it, but it is actually good. Can you guys see the jackfruit in there? That's a jackfruit. It's like shredded pork but from a fruit. Mm, and the avocado is really good with that. What do you think, babe? I like it. It's not weird at all. Good. <laughs> you like it better than the barbecue jackfruit we had? Yes. Very much.
It wasn't too hard to make either. I just basically like put things in two different bowls and then started cooking them. So yay, thumbs up. It's weird. It looks like shredded pork. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the point. Weird. Well, um, thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. And I'm so excited that you got to see me be completely successful with my kitchen plan. Because I wasn't sure it was going to happen. I was definitely scared that I wasn't going to make everything on my list. And then I would have to cook again on top of my streams. It's only 90 degrees there and no humidity. That's like a, a better scenario than up here. <laughs> what temperature did the car say it was on your way home? I didn't look. Were you too scared? It's weird. It's cloudy, but really freaking hot and extremely humid. Maybe it's going to thunderstorm later. It's storming up north. They're having tornado warnings and stuff. Nice. Wow. Okay. Like around North Conway and stuff. Wow. That's intense. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, so MVP, you going to ditch work and come to Canopy on Thursday? <laughs> Are you going to Canopy on Thursday? Yeah, we were talking about it. <laughs> I don't think my boss will let me. No, probably not. All right, I'm going to close things up because I got to eat this food and, like, clean up and stuff. And then... I need to move? No, nope, we're fine. You're fine where you are. Okay. But thank you guys for coming, and I really appreciate it. And I'm going to see if um, there's anyone online that I'm following. Nope. So, yeah. Oh, well. I'm not going to post or rate anybody because nobody's on except for the Loter stream. They don't have a raid alert. That's not fun. What's weird is the DDO stream has host and raid alert, but Loter stream doesn't. Oh, well. Well, thank you guys so much for coming, and I really appreciate it. And we're going to eat and... Stop by again on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern um, if you would like to hang around while I make more kombucha. Um, and then I will also be online on Thursday at or around 3 o'clock as well. Can I do a plug? Plug for what? Watch the DDO stream tonight at 7? Yes. That. Eastern? That's where I'll be. That's where I'll be too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> MVP streams every Monday night, Dungeons & Dragons Online at 7 o'clock. And it's DDO stream. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming. Hearts and kisses. <laughs> Bye.